so you get blocked nose mm -hmm. you'll be sneezing and you get itchiness of your nose and also your eyes mm -hmm. and sometimes you do have some weird taste or even itchy of your palate in your throat oh, again well, your I've mouth had okay so you try and scratch the top <laughs> of your yes. mouth so yeah. you got itchiness everywhere so commonly mouth nose and also your eyes and also your ears okay at to a certain extent mm -hmm. then you get blocked nose and runny nose okay now the uh, the symptoms could be mild or even severe so you could have it when you are exposed to the um, triggering factors and it could be seasonal so that will be more so in the uk so during um autumn or summer i'm oh, sorry during summer okay all right now but the persistent one will be the most affected one so it could disturb their sleep could disturb your job your performance at school because symptoms is every day so That's that true. would be the worst scenario i'm sure you know i'm sure viewers also have, you know people that will get up and start sneezing like 10 times in a row before <laughs> even true. you know having a morning coffee um, <laughs> that happens and then also when they enter a cold room yes. or at night before sleeping and all it can get in the way of day-to-day -day sure. tasks. Yes. So yes. what is the way to prevent this from um from getting yeah in? yeah okay um so we move straight away to prevention. Prevention is um it's actually quite easy okay if you can identify what is a triggering factors then it's best to avoid mm -hmm. okay so if you have cats like some of them I have, I have ten cats at home okay there you go <laughs> okay all right so if you have cats so you might want to keep the cats outdoor okay don't sleep with the cats all right um and then the other thing will be the rest will be more of controlling house dust mites okay mm -hmm. so you may need a different um sorry additional layer of protective layer on your bed mattress mm -hmm. and simple things like um on the wall with your frames you have to wipe frequently your fans you look up oh okay let's take one inch of dust on your fan okay regularly servicing your aircon and vacuum your um what do you call your drapes okay and your curtains so those are little little things that you may not notice but it does trigger effects yes that's right and you can't have carpets in your bedroom oh, at all dear. <laughs> yes. find an alternative for uh, cool pieces we've got yes. some slides and some pictures to look at uh, let's take a quick look at some of this uh in terms of what exactly happens when one is affected uh, yes. with rhinitis too we have the slide up there. Okay, right. Um, in this uh, picture, it is overlap between allergic rhinitis and sinusitis. Okay. okay. So you can see from the front part here, that's called frontal sinus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the uh, side here is on the cheek is maxillary sinus. And concentrate on the nose there. We have three structures there called, it's like a filter. Right. Okay. Those areas can get swollen mm -hmm. when you have allergy. All right. Okay. So for allergic rhinitis, we concentrate on the middle part of the nose. So that's right? what becomes inflamed, inflamed, and then you right? react to it yes. with the sneezing and True. the stuffy runny nose and the tired eyes. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Prevention. Now a lot of right. people go to the counters, to the pharmacies, uh, try and get off the counter, um, you know, treatment. True. Is that advisable or? When you know that, yes, I have a serious problem, what are the next right. steps? Um, we do have over-the-counters medicine like antihistamine to prevent ourselves from secreting a lot of mucus. But to a certain extent, please visit your nearest um, general practitioner. Mm -hmm. So normally, they will give a mild treatment, either antihistamine or nasal spray. So nasal spray can be in two forms, okay? Either with steroids, okay, because to reduce the swelling of the um, uh, mucus uh, in your nose, the other one will be washing with um, saline, right. okay? So it's basically to rinse off all the allergens from your nose, mm -hmm. okay? Now, towards a certain extent, I do not encourage to just over buy over-the-counter because if the symptoms persist longer than three months, that's um, something to trigger for you to see the uh, ENT surgeons at a hospital, at tertiary hospital, because we don't want to develop complications. Okay, so that's the indicator if yes. you're having persistent Persistent symptoms, symptoms for over three months yes. because initially when you first get the runny nose and uh, the sneezing one might True. think it's a general cough flu True. fever yes. uh, routine that True. happens every few True. months True. Yes. Uh, but uh, so then to monitor that and to, to ensure that um, it's really not just that and it's yes, a lot yeah. more. I would recommend after one month to three months like that, that window period. Mm -hmm. So especially when you have persistent headache, not responding to your normal treatment, you should go and get it checked. Okay. okay. And what about, uh, you know, at home, there are a lot of uh, home 
remedies that we can do. <laughs> right. um, you can buy that um, salt crystal and sort of steam inhalation. Yes. Uh -huh. Some put in Vicks, but sometimes it's quite pungent to your nose. So those are um, small, I mean, certain remedies, you can do it at home. Okay, right. but the, the scare factor, um, yes. is, it, is it extremely bad or can it get worse if you do not contain it? Yes, of course. Because once you develop complication like sinusitis, then you get a bacterial infection. Okay, we will talk about it later. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> it will cause such a severe symptoms that you get persistent headaches. So that's when you start taking energy six, you know, like painkillers. Right, and when, when you are constantly on painkillers, then you wouldn't know that your kidney will go. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the danger when you're taking um, medicine for headache without consulting a proper doctor, and they would just give painkillers all the way, and that's when you kill your kidney with your painkillers. Some of them going on for years, they didn't right. even know that yeah. you are having sinusitis. Okay, so of course, the first the key indicator are your triggers, uh, things like uh, ha uh, air pollution, uh, house uh, dust that's mites, nice. um, also of course with the haze, like yeah. you mentioned earlier, there was True. a surge. Um, yeah. Here, else, this picture shows us, uh, you know, some of right. um, the... Uh, sort of indicators as well. True. Now this is showing right from the in front of your nose, right down to your throat. So sometimes you can't blow your secretions. It doesn't come out from the front, mm -hmm. but you're swallowing it behind your throat. Okay. So you can see the uh, mucus is trickling down from the nose going back and down going towards the throat, becoming phlegm. Okay. It is a phlegm. Okay, mm -hmm. so all your mucus is going down and you're swallowing it. Okay, and to a certain extent, that will cause pneumonia later. Mm -hmm. You'll get chest infection. So from this picture, you can see when you're having a lot of mucus, runny nose, blocked nose, eventually you get sore throat. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's uh, basically infecting the throat behind there. And then you can start having cough. So you'll be coughing up phlegm okay, because of this. That's right. And that's uh, how the, the, it, you try to fight the, yes. the infection. But <laughs> of course, uh, that's not good enough because it needs to be completely yes. uh, sucked out. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, is there any way that you can get uh, uh, other symptoms prior to the, the, the nose symptoms? So that means you have the sore throat first or yeah. you have headaches first before you start to get the indications. You usually get sneezing first. You start sneezing. For allergic rhinitis, it's quite... Um, simple, mm -hmm. you will definitely start sneezing. So that's the first indicator. Either you will start having upper respiratory tract infection or allergy, you will start sneezing and itchy. So you get itchy around the eyes, around your cheek, around your face. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the easiest symptoms to know whether you have allergic rhinitis. That's right. Of course, you know, uh, in this day and age, we are surrounded uh, with the, an, an, an environment that is either in an aircon room yes. or in a polluted area. Yes. So, uh, right. you know, what can we do, for example, for those who are yeah. in the aircon room from day to night? That's <laughs> all right. I've had few patients who really have difficulty at workplace. So I told them you really have to wear either shawl or jacket, or you really have to tell the maintenance to reduce the temperature in your room if it is too cold. Mm -hmm. Some of them at 16 degrees. So I mean, you really need to go at 20 or 24 degrees because the secretaries in the room, when they are confined to their own room, okay? And some move to the old building. So probably there's a problem with the ventilation in the aircon so that's beyond our control mm -hmm. but there are certain <clears throat> drugs and also spray that you can use so for certain extent this kind of uh, people they need to use a nasal spray nowadays we do have a um, what you call that um, natural spray that doesn't contain steroid it is uh, approved by the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. so you spray the nose before going to work Okay. okay, and also while at work, so, so for example, during lunch hour, you need to spray your nose as well. So one spray can last, can help for about, you yeah, for about two, two hours, three hours. hours. Yes, and it is natural, mm -hmm. so it doesn't contain steroid, and those pregnant ladies can also use it, so it's very good. And what about some of the myths? Um, some might say mm -hmm. that it is contagious, but it's not, right? Yeah, the one um, that is contagious is if you're having upper respiratory tract infection, with virus or bacterial infection. So you can't catch cold from other people. But the one with allergic rhinitis is not contagious. So okay. it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Yes. But you think 
saying that you might be, uh, you know, part of these stats. 92 uh, Malaysians, in fact, do suffer from some kind of nasal symptoms. Make sure that uh, you go visit uh, your nearest GP. On that note, we'll take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll come back with Dr. Uh, Zana to talk a little bit more about your nose, how you can know your nose, and if you are suffering from sinusitis.